Hi everyone. Welcome. My name is Doris Raymond and I'm the proud owner of the vintage clothing emporium called The Way We Wore in Los Angeles. For those of you that are familiar with me and my business, thank you for joining us. We had such a, a good response from the few YouTube videos that we've done referencing movies or TV shows that we thought we would do another one. And today's episode is on Bridgerton, which is a Regency period. And the costume designer is was um, Ellen Mirajnik. I want to say a couple of things before we look at the clothing that is inspired by Bridgerton. Sometimes when a film is done in a particular period, creative changes occur. I'll tell you, I remember when I supplied some things to Alina Panova, who was working with Gabriella Pescucci on Age of Innocence, Martin Scorsese's film. I believe that film was supposed to be in the period of 1870, but 1870 wasn't as beautiful as 1880s. And so they took the artistic liberty of bumping it up a decade. I'm pretty sure that I've got my dates right. But it's been many years and I'm old and my memory is not as good as it used to be. So why am I telling you this? Because there were artistic exercises where they stretched a little bit in Bridgerton. The colors were not authentic to the period and I think it just makes the film look much more relevant and I think that was the intention. I, I also need to make true, true confessions. I'm really good at 20th century fashion. Anything older than 20th century is really out of my bailiwick. So um, I defer to the experts and uh, you may want to make reference to Amanda Haley's episodes. Um, but in any case, the silhouette is Empire style and you'll see that reference pretty much throughout the entire 20th century in fashion. And we'll start with the mannequins just because they are so prominent. This beautiful ball gown, which is um, a silk brocade, is Carolina Herrera. And it's styled with an incredible Wahlberg rhinestone purse. Not quite big enough to fit your phone in, but almost there. Depends on which brand. And then on this side, one of my all-time favorite designers, contemporary designers, Ralph Rucci, silk chiffon ombre, very statuesque. The empire waistline is implied. It's not, a, a, it's not clearly delineated. And um, Mike accessorized it with this faux jet choker and wrapped and a suit um, around as a kind of capelet stole um, and, and paired it with a Whiting and Davis mesh purse. What I love about these mannequins is it illustrates exactly what um, Bridgerton did, which was make it relevant to today. Um, it still has the integrity of the silhouette but you could totally see someone walking out the door wearing these things and not looking like they're wearing a costume. When a costume designer has a um, producer, line producer, uh, who is sympathetic to how huge the task is, they can create magic on the screen. She, she also did the costumes for The Greatest Showman so she has a very incredible range of her body of work is incredible. So we have on the rack um, dresses and gowns from, <coughs> excuse me, the 
late 50s to the 80s, 90s. I'm going to start with one of the older ones. What I love about these things is the fabrics that were used are pretty luxe. Uh, this is not a labeled piece, but the designer chose to embellish the jacquard with black beads, which really makes the pattern pop only on the bodice, which is clever, because if you do it on the skirt, I have to tell you, there's a, a logistical problem when you sit. You end up losing pretty much all the beads on your butt. And um, that's not a pretty picture. So, <laughs> so this is a, a great dress. And then this is another luxe, super luxe fabric. It's a couture finish. Uh, this brocade, it's like a hostess dress. So because it has these slits on the side, you can make it empire, you can make it a defined waist, and it's a delicious color. And then this wonderful Grecian style gown, fabulous for a wedding dress. It's Malcolm Star. For those of you that love vintage are familiar with Malcolm Starr's name. Uh, the little peekaboo uh, in the Empire line. You can see, here's the advertisement from Harper's Bazaar, 1968. If you've watched a few of these episodes, you know that I have a particular fondness for Ralph Rucci and also for Stavropoulos. Stavropoulos uses typically four to six layers of chiffon to create a fullness. And this gown is no exception. I love how he pairs this with Chantilly lace. So you can see the beautiful floral pattern on the Chantilly lace. One of the best pieces on the rack just because of the maker is a Christian Dior haute couture gown, strapless, uh, with amazing Lesage embroidery beading. This has all the inner foundation work and it's a work of art. When you wear it, the bodice creates a beautiful silhouette and it's for someone pretty lithe. And then this incredibly embellished, it's also very heavy because of the bullion embroidery and the crystal decorations. And it's done on a really beautiful gold lame brocade, um, getting my upper arm workout. 1960s, but you can see the clear definition of the empire waist. I could see getting married in this. And then this silver gold lace, uh, strapless empire gown and shawl is Oscar de la Renta from the 1970s. Another great piece for a bride, possibly, or red carpet. Yeah. And then one of my favorite LeMay fabrics is this because it it's I mean you just you have to see the fabric up close. It's not a label that I'm familiar with. It's posh, P O S H. 60s True Empire It's a great walk, head turner kind of gown. And with these um, pastel colors in the weaving, you can really have fun accessorizing this one. And of course, where would we be if we didn't include gunny sacks, Jessica McClintock. 
So a lot of the gunny sack stresses are not as much Regency as they are prairie style. I remember in the early 1980s when these were like the hottest things. And I lived in San Francisco, which is where Jessica McClintock manufactured her clothing. You couldn't walk down the street without seeing these. We have different variations. This one with a cotton velveteen and lace. But all of them have period details, like this one. And, and then these are not gunny sacks, but they aspire to be. Hmm. Fun, almost Renaissance but clearly 1960s. And this flocked with the poodle sleeve detail. And then this last piece, which is really interesting, is a coupe de velour, very expensive fabric, with its turban by the Hollywood costume designer Jean-Louis. And for those of you that are familiar with Jean-Louis, he was married to Loretta Young. And this was actually Loretta Young's dress and hat. This was donated to a charity by Loretta Young with this car information card. And I ended up buying it from the charity because they liquidated their costume collection. They used to do fashion shows. So, lucky me. So, some of the comments that we get over and over and over and over again are people want to know what it is that I'm wearing. I refrain from putting attention on myself and my clothing because that's not what these YouTube ep episodes are about. But that being said, I will say that everything that I have on, the dress and the scarf, are from India. Uh, the scarf is a resist dye, a shibori dye, and this dress, all the patterns you see on it are hand embroidered. This is the kind of thing that got me into vintage clothing because you see the handwork and you feel the spirit of the people that created it. It's really just great. Plus the colors are awesome. If you've watched previous episodes, you know that we're fast approaching 50,000 subscribers. And to honor that, we've decided to do a giveaway, which is a $500 gift card towards any item or items in the store. Um, and in order to be considered for the gift card, we ask that you let us know what you would want to get with the $500 or um, just communicate to us in the comments. We appreciate your loyalty, your interest, your comments, um, and hope that we have a chance to actually meet you this year, God willing, the um, COVID-19 scare evaporates. So um, I really appreciate your time and your attention and look forward to seeing you next episode. Thank you. Bye.